Okay, now it's time to start um, grooming this character. And um, I guess everything is basically straightforward. We're just going to get the general direction in the fur. And I would say that the face will probably be the sort of most complicated, but not so much. Let's see. Um, the idea is that we will really think about the direction. If you look at animals, they have sort of this kind of pole, uh, like the fur on the forehead goes back, and on the nose here again goes down like this, so on, and everything sort of radiates out from the eyes, and um, yeah, and up there. So. That's something to think about. Um, and I mean, all the other stuff. Just the arm going long down to the hand. And I mean, this is just pull out some references from Google or something. It's going to be great. Oops. OK. So uh, let's uh, select uh, brush groom hair long BGI yep that's the one okay so now I have doubled the speed on the video in order to just so you won't have to see me <laughs> working so much um, here you could see me isolating the face or the fur on the face so I don't um, so I'm not accidentally working on anything else just working with the ears there And uh, I was having some issues with the left and the right side, and I just uh, found it easier to change to a smaller brush size while working on the ears. It's like, just in the beginning, grab a big uh, size brush and do the strokes so you get the general, general direction, and then change it to a smaller size brush and go over it once more. Here you can see me showing off uh, the front collision tolerance. If you lower that, the grooming will go really tight to the body. So I um, set it a bit higher again. Now I'm just working with broad strokes on the body. And you could see the tail was um, blocking the stroke, actually. So uh, that's something to keep in mind really have to hide uh, other kind of sub tools so they don't affect the grooming and soon you will see a problem that occurs uh, with the arm there that it's blocking my stroke while I'm grooming the the fur on the torso so in order to fix that I want to hide um, everything but the original geometry of the torso and also the fur uh, on the torso. Yeah, so I'm isolating stuff by control shift clicking them. And that's why it's so handy with those polygroups. Sometimes it can be an issue if you have, like there, where I'm working uh, with hair that ends up at the border of the geometry. Then you can just extend your uh, visibility a bit. So now you can see a bit of the shoulder as well. And that sort of helps with keeping the um, the fur in the right place.
So I'm still just working with really broad strokes on the body, just a general direction of the fur. So now I'm unhiding all the other fur, and I'm going to work on the arm. So I change to the um, geometry of the body. Change to the lasso tool. You have to clear your mask first. Then just press H to hide everything that's not masked. Then you can go back to the fiber mesh and just control shift click on the on the fur on the arm. So if we if we wouldn't had set up uh, polygroups at the beginning, we would have a hard time doing this kind of stuff. And here I think the um, the fur is needs to be tighter to the body, so I just lower the front collision tolerance in the brush settings. Here you can see I have a problem with a few fiber mesh hairs just intersecting with the geometry. So I'm masking those off with the mask pen, inverting the mask and then just using a bigger size on my grooming brush to put them in place. Uh, one thing about masking is when you're working with normal geometry, you, uh, you mask by vertex. And if you mask with your pen, your mask pen on fiber mesh, you mask the entire um, hair at once. That's not the case if you use mask lasso though. So now I'm gonna go over to the other arm and uh, isolate visibility on that. And then I just control shift click the fur on the that arm and start working. Okay, now it's time to work on the um, the leg as well. Just doing the same thing. Isolating visibility back to the fur and control shifting the fur on the leg. As I was working with the leg, I had a problem um, since I had such a big brush size. Um, I sometimes, you know, touched the side that I didn't want to touch, and um, so I just masked that off. Once again, I isolated visibility on the leg and also the fur on the leg.
you can see on the shoulder there that when uh, working on different polygroups only, you don't get the nice transition on the shoulder. And that's what I'm fixing now. Once again, I'm, I'm sort of fighting with the ears to get the fur to <laughs> do what I want. Now I'm just masking off one side so I can know I don't have to worry about you know, accidentally grooming the uh, the other side. Now I'm just testing if I am getting a better result with the, the groom one brush. Sorry, groom brush one. I decided to switch back to groom hair long though. As you can see, I'm just working with a smaller brush size once again. Also, I lowered the front collision tolerance, so the hair will just be groomed tighter to the body, or the ears, I mean. And here you can see me describing, you know, the red is representing uh, a high front collision tolerance and the blue is representing a low front collision tolerance so the you know the hair just is groomed closer to the body when you use a lower front collision tolerance Here I decided to use a bigger brush once again with a lower front collision tolerance. Yeah, I was annoyed there with the it was too much straight hair at the start of the year. Just working on the profile. Not making it look so messy. Now you can see me just using a big brush with a low front collision tolerance. 
Yeah. Better results. So the problem here is it's um, it got so um, so much curving. I mean the the ear has a <clears throat> it's uh, it's hollow. I mean, so you really have to turn the camera and uh, work on all angles. I'm just working some more on the face. Yeah. Just masking out some fur on the around the eye. Usually when I mask something off like this, it's because I don't want to accidentally um, move the hair around because I'm using a bigger brush. So right now I'm working on the upper lip and I don't want to touch the area around the chin. So that's the first pass on grooming, and I'm going to stop by doing a quick render just to try it out, see what it looks like. 